thank God, thank Pastor Madeline for having me, inviting me here. It's an honor and joyful to be here with you, sharing with you the Word of the God, Word of God. This morning, I will I will share the Word. Madeline has invited me, told me a little bit about the situ- about the Anabaptist journey we've been doing. But I, I want to do is this morning is is share with you a little bit uh, about a biblical link that was very important for the first Anabaptist that it's also continues to be important for the first Anabaptist. I understand that you have studied a little bit about the history of Anabaptists and you have talked about what, I mean, for the Anabaptists, how the center of our faith is Jesus. Like, how the center of our life is the community of the church. And its center of our work is the reconciliation. But what is there? A little deeper than those three centers. Me as a research, as an Anabaptist research and a study, and as a student of that area, I have discovered with other researchers there's something more. There's a center under those three centers. And that center is nothing else but the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. The Mennonites, nowadays, we don't talk about the Spirit. We like to talk about Jesus, the disciple, congregation, community, the work of doing reconciliation, but but in all the Anabaptist tra- tradition, there is a testimony to the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us, who transforms us, create, forms congregations, and empowers us to be able to testify to others of our Lord Jesus. So, I will highlight a biblical, as I said, a biblical link to be able to show the center what is but would touch the center of the heart of the Anabaptist Church. The spirit of Jubilee, the heart of the Anabaptist. I give a preface of this. I will start about a study that it's the story that's in Luke, in both of his book, in the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. Luke tells us tells us a story and to be able to understand this story we need to understand the context of the Bible, the context or the background of this story inside the church. It comes from the Old Testament. And then I will speak about the spirit of Jubilee because in the story that Luke tells us the spirit is identified as a traditional in a biblical tradition which is the tradition of Jubilee what is the Jubilee how is it relating to the person which is Jesus his work and with the church That church which he speaks about, which is this church. So let's start with a story that Jesus recounts is. Sometimes when we speak about the story or the history, we think about big books with a lot of information, with a lot of acts. Those acts are actually... And you can find a lot of those same actions or acts in museums, and the history tells a lot of inf- interesting information. But the story that Luke tells us that not only has information, but it has also a lot of information. We can also learn a lot about God, the ministry of Jesus. But it is not a story 
only to inform us, but also to invite us, to invite us to be participants in the same story that Luke tells us. This story that Luke's recount that Luke recounts it starts with the mission of God. It's the the background is the mission of God, and we can learn more about the mission of God. We can read about that. The chapter twelve of Genesis, where God makes His covenant with Abraham. And it says that if Abraham is faithful, Abraham is faithful to the covenant, may God bless his family so his family would be a blessing for all the families in the world. So, therefore, God's mission is to be able to select, get a group people, and through faithfulness of the people to the covenant of God, God will bless all of the families of the world. That story is the background that Luke tells us. Luke is narrating a story of development of God's mission. And as we know, as readers of his gospel, Luke is centered in the work of Jesus and the Holy Spirit that directs him. It's a story of the formation of church through this spirit. And that's why it is our story. It's not only a story of the church from 2,000 years, but it's also a story that asks us to participate about and for us. Okay, so in order to understand this story, we need to know a little more about the biblical context of the story. In the Old Testament, the Spirit is described in, it's described as the power of God. The God is, the Spirit of God, this, the Spirit is the power of God. The translations of the Old Testament use several words to describe the Spirit. They may change. The authors of the Old Testament use several words to describe this spirit as the power of God. Sometimes they use words like wind. The wind of God. Genesis 1, he said he is blowing, moving around the waters. Seeing the power of God giving it a shape, a form, a foundation of the world or the formation of the world. And we have an image of what the power of God as the Spirit of God collaborating with the Word of God to be able to create. We also have the breath God breathes, gives his breath to the first man in Genesis 2. And the prophet Ezekiel talks about as God's breath giving life to the dry bones, to the power of Israel. That Im image is the image of a prophetic word used by the Spirit of God to give life to the people of God to fulfill the mission that God has for His people. 
another image is the personality of God. His strength, His love, to do what He has promised, and the humanistic personality, a personality that depends like our breath, just like we depend with the wind in God. God is is in whom we trust and we depend on. So all of the Old Testament we have a cornerstone this a connection of the Spirit of God and the power of God. The Spirit of God is not only the strength to make us feel better. It's also it's not only a force to show that God is strong. The Spirit of God is the present power of God to be able to fulfill the mission of God, to be able to create a people, a group of people that within its own life can show the world what God has promised to each one of us. The promise of God, or God's promise, it's visible in the life of the faithful people who made a, a covenant with God. The Spirit of God, which is present, which is there to fulfill with its promises. In the story that Luke tells us, this background story of the Old Testament, it's very present. In the first first chapters of Luke, Luke uses the image of to be fill, filled with the Spirit. It's almost like it's each opportunity that Luke has to say that someone is filled with the Spirit. He takes that opportunity. He tells us a story of how God's promises, the promise of the covenant, the promise of his mission, to be able to choose a group of people, to choose to bless all the families in the world, those promises are fulfilled. So the Spirit is present in those times. In the, in the birth of Jesus and John the Baptist, their mothers are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit comes and fills them to direct them and guide them through the desert to be able to fight off temptation and to continue the beginning of his mission. And then in the book of Acts, Luke tells us how the same spirit that filled Jesus and John the Baptist's mother, the same spirit that was present, that was present and within and over Jesus to start his ministry, this same spirit is present to form, create the church about 2,000 years ago and up to date. That church, as we see it, as we see in the book of Acts, it's a church that is formed to be able to serve others. To be able to give testimony in spite of the church being under persecution. And to be able to commit to the work of God. So then, or the ministry of God, sorry. So where do we find this spirit in Luke? And how do we understand it? And how do we and how do we know that the spirit that Luke talks about is real has a connection with Jesus and his mission? I'm going to read some of the biblical passages of the books 
that Luke has written. Which first one is? And I said that at the beginning, the ministry of Jesus is filled with the Spirit and guided by the Spirit and is filled with the Spirit. So Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21, and he says like this. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up and then his custom was he went into the synagogue on, Sab on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet of Isaiah. Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, has anoint he hath anointed me to the preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to the to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering sight to the blind, and to set liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And said to them, this day, in his person, in his mission, the, prom the prophetic promise of a favorable year, a year that the prisoners were freed, delivered, that the blind were able to receive sight, a year in which the captives were liberated, and the poor have a lot. That's the work of the Spirit that the prophet is talking about when he talks about the new good news. And it's this, the and it's the year of the, that's the year that the Spirit is talking about the favorable year of the Lord. And that's where Jesus is saying at the beginning of his ministry. Which he is being, he's guiding and being fulfilled. To understand a little more, I also want to read of this prophet Isaiah. Jesus is quoting Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne. Oh, 61, sorry. Wrong verse, wrong chapter. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn, to anoint, to appoint unto them the, and that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty of ashes and the oil of joy and the mourning of the garment of the praise for the spirit and the heaviness that they give. He called the trees of the righteousness and planting of the Lord and that he might be glorified. Now we have the books here that he gave to the prophets the prophets stating that there will be a Messiah. A Messiah is going to show this favorable year. And Jesus says that in his ministry, this prophecy is being fulfilled. What is this favorable year? A lot of researchers think it's a reference to, uh, to a biblical tradition that's talking about Jubilee. The Jubilee, the first time the mention talks about Jubilee, it's in Leviticus chapter 25. And basically, it's the tradition. Talk about the Sabbath. 
a rhythm of of restoration for the Lord, for the persons, for the people of God. To give life to everyone and to encourage the people to be faithful to the covenant. In Leviticus chapter 25, talks about about the liberation and the restoration of soil. If two or three people are in a community, all the land is there. So it's very difficult that everyone will eat, you know. Why? Because the land is of, belongs to God. God is the owner of the land. Of the people of God should share its goods so that everyone can participate in the community. A lot of books of the Old Testament talks about a vision, a mission, a mission that every family has its own land, its own tree, and its own place to be able to grow and have life. In the tradition of the Jubilee, it talks about the liberation of slaves. French, frankly, it talks about the possibility that during a lot of years, a lot of people, that some, a lot of people will have hard work and some are going to be incarcerated, but the incarceration, hard work, like the servitude, shouldn't be permanent. Shouldn't be permanent. So it's a year of liberation every seven years. And the Jubilee is every seven Sabbaths. Seven cycles of every seven years. The year after the 49 years, it is the 50th year. In this year of Jubilee, there's cancellation of debts. We know though that the debt makes it difficult to have an abundant life. God has promising us that regularly the debt would be canceled. The Jubilee, again, it's like how God, that makes his people fulfill his covenant, keep his covenant, promise. And we can see that in the book of Acts, that the Spirit, the day of Pentecost, creates a community of Jubilee. So what makes the the book of I mean the day of Pentecost on the book of Acts chapter two and when the day of the Pentecost was filled come they were all with the accord in one place. I'm gonna read part of it. This is chapter two verse forty two. And they continued steadily in the apostles two verses forty two to forty seven. And they continually steadfast the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking bread and in prayers. And then chapter 4, verse 32. And the multitude of them believed were one of the heart and one soul, neither to all things in common. So when the book of... Luke came. Each one of them had his community of Jubilee. Every person has their own needs. And without these needs, it would be hard to be able to be faithful to the covenant. And the covenant is not just something for if people would feel something, but it's also people will show of its own life to be part of the community. What is the problem? The that is the promise of God. That is the promise of God. That we all have a lot. 
How do we know? At the beginning of the ministry of God, in the day of the Pentecost, a lot of things happen in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus heals a lot, liberates a lot, and also Jesus walks towards the cross. And the other side of the cross is the resurrection. I can talk a lot about this, about the cross today, but the cross is, we can understand that the story that Luke tells us, that the cross is not only something that happened to Jesus, an incident or information, yeah, yes, Jesus was crucified, but he was crucified to be able to open a path for us open a path so that we may receive the Spirit of God so we can be transformed by this Spirit of Jubilee so that we can be transformed as a congregation of the same Spirit to so be able to follow this Jesus towards the cross you know f beyond the resurrection is to be filled with the Spirit like Jesus just like Jesus was filled with the Spirit. It's to be a Pentecostal church. And what I mean by that is that a church that is formed by the Spirit of God to serve, to give testimony, the acts of God, and to be able to share one with another. Walk with the steps of Jesus and receive through the Spirit the faithfulness of Jesus to the promise we made to God. This is the Spirit that was guiding Jesus, that was that filled Jesus to be able to do be able to be in a faithful community, filled with community, filled with the Spirit. Why am I talking about this story this morning when I'm trying to talk about the Anabaptist tradition? If we say that, if we say the center of our faith is Jesus, but who is Jesus? For Luke and for the New Testament, Jesus was who has the Spirit of God who offers his followers the Spirit of God. So without the Spirit, we don't have the center of Jesus. What's the church that we have in the center? It's the church just formed the day of the Pentecost by the Spirit. And what is this work of reconciliation that we have? in the center of our work. It's a work that's empowered by the Spirit of God. It's a work to liberate the oppressed, give good news to the poor, free the prisoners, give sight to the blind. In the Anabaptist story, history, for the first Anabaptist, this story that Luke tells us was very present in the movement that's there. He talked a lot about the identity of the church, which is in Acts 2 and 4, and that's why he talked about the... Uh, need to share of what they have. Not as in a political agenda, but as an act, like an act of God through His Spirit. But the persecution arrived. And inside this 
persecutions. A lot of Anabaptists stopped talking about the Spirit. They did hear about it. They did believe in the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is God. They would focus in the Word of Jesus and obey what God has teaches us. And the Anabaptist tradition is a tradition that's very important, reminding us of the Edinburgh to study the, the life and the, the teachings of Jesus and to put that into practice. Maybe the most maybe the most important gift is to remind ourselves that Jesus is the center of our faith. But also remembering those Anabaptists, the first ones, at least studying Jesus, that is to remember for them and for a lot of us today in the Anabaptist family in the world. It's this Jesus that Luke talks about filled with the Spirit, directed by the Jesus, given His Spirit to transform, to create a church of the Spirit, a church of the Jubilee. So being part of this tradition, Anabaptist tradition, is to be able to open up to follow the Spirit not not in opposition to study the teaching of Jesus and obey them but to be able to realize that we can't not follow or understand Jesus without the Spirit of God we need the Spirit of Jesus to be able to follow him to be empowered and be able to understand him to be, have a community a faithful community in the covenant of God to practice this prophetic action of jubilee. So please, I would like to pray as I finish this sermon. I'd like to pray as I finish this sermon. Again, it's a pleasure being here sharing with you. Following over the tradition and about the Anabaptist tradition, but overall the Spirit of God, the Word of God about His Spirit. Not only not only information of the Spirit but as an invitation to be able to receive the Spirit and be a participant in which the Spirit is present just teaching us to be faithful. Let's pray. God, you're here because loving us, healing us, transforming us. You know us very well. You know very well our scars, our confusion, our sins, and you're still present here with us. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We ask you, Lord. that your spirit be poured upon us your spirit of jubilee this jubilee that the prophets talked about that which Luke tells us about history in the life of Jesus send your spirit to be present as a a power that transforms a power that activates, that makes us a follower of Jesus. Not only reading and studying to be able to obey about our own, with our strength, but also encourage with your love, encourage by your life for this power that you offer us of your spirit to be able to serve one another and to share with one another and to give testimony of life that you call us to do. 
we thank you for this invitation. This in story that you invites us to be participants in your mission with people that blesses all the world. Thank you, Lord. Amen.